Uh, E3 is dead. E3 says, after more than two decades of E3, one each one bigger than the last, it is time to say goodbye. Thanks for the memories. GG WP from the E3. Um, the E3 was basically a big advertisement for video games. And the death of E3 is kind of overdue. Like, I think that the general consensus has been, why is the E3 even a thing every year? Um, and it's a good question because it doesn't serve any more purpose. Um, the the whole thing, like, the, the number of mainstream games that exist is like a handful of 20-year-old franchises that they keep refusing to let die owned by like two or three companies now you have activision blizzard you have ea you have microsoft and then you have like a handful of japanese companies and like that's it so like what what is the point what is the point of advertising oh yeah by the way that game franchise that everyone already knows about guess what they're gonna do it again like is that necessary no it's not uh, advertising is done through through other through other mechanisms now, so it's a, basically a defunct concept. The whole idea of a video game thing. Um, I was kind of thinking about video games, and it made me sad because I was thinking about how, and people got mad at me because it's it's not, it's one of those things where I say something like, almost every game that comes out now is either Unity or Unreal, and then people go. <sighs> Josh, there's like nine trillion game engines out there. Yeah, but when you look at like the the modern landscape of games, what are most of the the games published built on? Unreal or Unity? It's not a, it's not a it's not like a a false statement. It's like generally speaking, I would say that the plurality of titles coming out are on one of those two game engines. And then people get upset and say, "Oh no, we got the Cry Engine, bro. We got the Cry Engine. We have the." The TES, come on now. It's like it's bullshit. Uh, most people are releasing one Unreal. And it's just like these games. What, here's what frustrates me is that when I um I had, I had talked about my podcast years ago when I had more free time, which I don't have any free time left now. Um, I was working on a, a breathing simulator. And um, it, it was basically just the phys- I was just I was just playing around with like physics simulation in a video game format on unity uh very specifically with the thermodynamics of gas exchange and that was it it was just like a a a little playground that i had been i had built to try and simulate you know gas like what happens if you have you know in an ideal ideal gas system in a closed system you have one mole of of you know regular of regular air in a room and then you add in uh, one tenth of a mole of nitrogen at a hundred degrees, and and it's like twenty C, and it's under one atmosphere. And then just doing the math of that, I learned a lot about about math and physics and and computer programming as a as a thing of just playing around with this. And what I learned, one of the things that I learned, is that um, modern computers are reaching the upper maximum of how fast a single core can can compute. And that's why modern CPUs are not much faster than older CPUs. Like you'll get 3.2 gigahertz as opposed to 3.0, but it'll be like just one point up as opposed to the advancements in the past where we'd go from like megahertz to gigahertz to two gigahertz to three gigahertz. Now it's like small increments, but what they're adding to it is more threads. So a modern CPU will have like 128 threads uh, clocked at three gigahertz. And so the the push is no longer faster and faster cores, but multi-threaded applications. And that is something that has never been taken advantage of uh, correctly in a video game. Imagine if you had a Dwarf Fortress, a passion project that was written from the ground up to make use of every core on your computer for a more um autistic simulation of whatever the fuck you know what i mean imagine um space station 13 but instead of being bottlenecked on one core every system was on its own core or it was just properly multi-threaded so it could take use as many cores as it needed to 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 simulate atmospherics on the space station that that's something that i think is uh, is surprising to me that not doesn't really exist 
We see all these new games come out that are clunkier and shittier. They're just the same fucking thing. They're no more sophisticated or interesting than games from 10 fucking years ago, but the graphics are prettier. And they all they all just hinge on NVIDIA making a better GPU. But none of them take advantage of the CPU and multi-threading to make more complex simulations and more interesting games. And I think that that's a, um, a real shame. So I was bemoaning that. Maybe one day, Chad, if I ever have the, op the opportunity to sit down, I will finish Breathing Simulator and we'll have a truly autistic game that will take a 256 core modern day Threadripper AMD uh, processor and, you know, peg it, <laughs> peg all 256 cores of it because it has to simulate um, nine, nine trillion different chemicals in the air at once. You know what I mean? And they all outsourced it. Yeah, that's true. It's true. It's weird because it's it's so weird. Here's the weird thing to me. Here's the really weird thing to me is that we have more, theoretically, we have more people online than ever before. We have more people educated in programming than ever before. We have billions of people online. We have almost a hundred percent market saturation to the internet and we have more programmers and more, you know, everything than ever before, but we have less of everything too. We have fewer websites. We have fewer communities. We have fewer social platforms. We have fewer um, diversity in games, and we we have less and less of uh, of uh, of real creativity online. It's it's crazy. It's really crazy. It's very depressing, though. Anyways, I just want to talk about that. It's something that's been bothering me for a while. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.